from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. It's an incredible honor to start this Memorial Day weekend with a true American hero. He is a <laughs> filmmaker. He's the CEO of Vanilla Fire Productions. Thank you so much for being Thanks here for today. Thanks for having me here. What an honor. It's fantastic. Right. So tell us your your entire kind of mission around your films are military driven. How well, did that mission start for you? You know, I, as I know it sounds kind of weird. God, I didn't do any of this. I'm not this good. Mm -hmm. I was uh, on a bike ride about 20 years ago. I don't know. You guys might old enough to remember Eddie Albert, the actor mm -hmm. from Green Acres. I met Eddie. He was 95 at the time. He was a battle hardened guy. He was in the World War II. And he was in a battle called Tarawa, where we lost uh, 1,200 Marines in three days. It was called Bloody Tarawa. So that, you know, it never occurred to me to make a movie. It never, I was an actor for about three seconds. You remember, you remember back in the 80s, that one scene I did? <laughs> so, <laughs> it, one scene. Right. It, it yeah. never occurred to me, actually, to make a film. But then, then something else happened 10 years later. I met another World War II veteran who was in that battle, who just passed away about four months ago, named Leon Cooper. And, and I just thought, what are the odds that I would meet these two battle-hardened veterans from this obscure battle from World War II? So it seemed like I was supposed to be on that mission. So Ed Harris was Leon's neighbor. Ed said, hey, if you find the money, I'll narrate it. And I'm like, Ed Harris? I mean, <laughs> uh, so I that, mo say no to that. <laughs> that motivated me. So I went out and found the dough, found a couple hundred grand. We went out to Tarawa. And that, st that was in 2008. Mm -hmm. And we've been going ever since. I just got back from Afghanistan about three months ago. I shot a movie called the world's most dangerous paper route about the men and women of Stars and Stripes. If you ever saw the movie Full Metal Jacket, mm -hmm. Matthew Modine and Ke Kevin Mayer, Major Howard actually play Stars and Stripes reporters. It's a real newspaper. Uh, it gets to a million people a day. They, they have 100,000 uh, issues that go out to our troops downrange, downrange meaning uh, behind enemy lines. Mm -hmm. So I was out on Blackhawks. I was out. Wow. I could see the Himalayas, the Hindu wow. Kush, and Amazing. I was out on a couple Talib Taliban hunting runs, which I don't suggest if it's if that's on your bucket list, Afghanistan, just scratch it because <laughs> it's. I'm glad I went. Yeah, but it's, what was it like? Uh, really? It was um, it was adrenaline full. It was you know no, let me let me tell you what it was like. Our young you know if it wasn't for the United States military and I say this with all my heart if it wasn't for the United States military the world would be thrust into darkness. Mm -hmm. What these young men and women doing and I'm talking 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. I actually met a 32 year old mm -hmm. captain who just had her fourth child. Mm -hmm. She was from Chicago and I'm like so what are you doing today captain? She goes well I just had my fourth child. Now I'm back and now I'm going to go out and engage the, the Taliban. Wow. And I was like and these are the best trained, the most highly motivated, the most sophisticated armed forces we've ever had mm -hmm. so because they're all volunteer right everybody's there because they want to be there so you know there's obviously there's different viewpoints on war military and everything above and I think that there's some real delusional people thinking that oh we just all love and we like there's there is some darkness on this planet and a lot there of are, we do need to have boundaries as we talk as we're supposed to have talked to in the first segment which we never got to um, but how do we have boundaries and so what do you looking at this you've been now in this conversation I know you're not an expert per se in like the bigger vision, but I think someone who's really told the stories, you're seeing the bigger picture of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Where do you think that line is between having those boundaries as a country and going into like, this is pure greed for money going into this? Well, zone? we have to be realistic. I mean, we live in the greatest country in the history of mankind. I mean, we're very, very fortunate in here. I mean, I've traveled to 73 countries. I've been to a lot of third world, mm -hmm. fourth world. I mean, Afghanistan's fifth world. In fact, I was with the, uh, the general of the 455th Air Command, and I said, why are we here? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if we left, what would happen? He goes, you know what would happen? He says the Taliban would kill millions of people. because, mm -hmm. And that's what they do. That's what happened. The Khmer Rouge did that in Vietnam after we left. So now we kind of have a position where like, we should have never pulled out of Iraq. Because once we go in, you know, what, what that basically formed the Taliban. That, that formed Al-Qaeda. So... You know, I'm not a policymaker. I'm just a filmmaker. Yeah. But I've, I've gone to these ancient battle sites. I've seen what our men and women have done. And I, I'm i thoroughly convinced that the United States military is a good thing. I mean, and, I mean, it really is a good thing. And if people doubt that, you know, just go travel a little bit. Mm -hmm. And without them, like I said, I really feel that the world would be a much, yeah. much darker place. Well, we have a special look at the trailer for your new film, The World's what? Most Dangerous Paper Route. Let's take a look. Right. Award-winning filmmakers Stephen Barber and Matthew Housley, along with producer Tamara Henry, bring you the world's most dangerous paper route. Never before seen images from legendary Stars and Stripes military newspaper. Don't worry about the uh, bullet with your name on it. Worry about those flying around that say to whom it may concern. 
I was a member of the West Point class of 1974, commissioned in the infantry as a second lieutenant. And Stars and Stripes was something we looked forward to receiving. Uh, it had a lot of news content that was not available elsewhere. Stars and Stripes was part of our daily existence. It, in a way, the hometown newspaper of the U.S. military. I think it's the most important newspaper media organization in the world. I had a choice between going to Armed Forces Network or to Stars and Stripes, and I picked Stars and Stripes. It was the top job and the top journalism job in the, in the U.S. military. So everybody read it. In the field, in particular, people were hungry for it. And there were no punches pulled. We knew what was going on in the States. We read about it every day. It's a great publication with a great history. I feel like it gives me an opportunity to tell some powerful stories. Join Vanilla Fire Productions as they head downrange to Afghanistan, Iraq, and Kuwait to follow the world's most dangerous paper route. I was the first woman actually to ever go out there. Before you know it, there's tear gas flying, and there's rocks flying, and there's bullets flying. These people put their lives on the line continuously. I love that. I haven't, I haven't seen that in quite a while. So, yeah. Yeah. Right, That's exciting. quite powerful. Yeah. Well, and it's like, I, I, I didn't look for this either. I mean, I haven't looked for stories in years. What happened was Stars and Stripes had done a couple stories on, on my company in 2015 in Japan and when I was out in the Philippines. So like the third time they did a story, I said, you guys are so cool. It's such a great historic newspaper. Has anybody ever done a documentary on you? And the guy that wrote the story on me named Seth Robson, this Kiwi, this new New Zealander, he said, oh, mate, I've always wanted to do a story on Stars and Stripes. It's not a very good news. <laughs> and he says, I want to call it the world's most dangerous paper route. And I'm like, I didn't come up with that. I'm like, and as soon as he said that to me, because a title can do so much, oh, I was sure. like, what did you say? He goes, the world's most dangerous paper route. I said, I'm in. So I called the publisher. I said, hey, I've got a great idea. I've got a great title. And it took about a year because it's DOD. Uh, Stars and Stripes is owned by the Defense Department. So I didn't really think I'd be able to get money out of the government. Mm -hmm. But... The guy that runs the paper was, uh, he's kind of retiring in the next year or two. He kind of wanted to have a swan song. And he had seen some of our work. And obviously, he knew of us because he had done a couple stories on us. And then it got, it got done. Mm -hmm. The next thing I knew, I was on a plane over to Dubai. I was in Kuwait. I was in Djibouti in Africa. Once again, another place I don't. Go to Cancun. Do not go to Djibouti. <laughs> right. Do not go to Djibouti. So, so okay. as Good Morning Lala, we don't get into politics per se, but I'm curious to know what it is, what's the message? What's the takeaway from this film? The takeaway is that our United States military deployed all over the world. They are Americans. They need to know what's going on in their hometown, which is what this is. This is a hometown newspaper. They need to know if the Dodgers are winning. They, and you can't believe, you know, 80% of the kids, you ask them, what's your favorite part of Stars and Stripes? Sports, man, the sports. I mean, so it's really important. A lot of, you know, there is a Stars and Stripes app, but I mean, you get out in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. all the wireless is shut down because the enemy, we don't want the enemy to have the wireless. So the only way to get to the, any sort of information to the troops is the newspaper. But how do you have a non-biased opinion in a newspaper like that? About well, you know, it's funny you should ask that because it is the most non-biased paper in, in the world. It is, it has, and the, the great thing about it is because it, even though it is DOD, it has First Amendment. I'm so glad you asked mm -hmm. that. It has First Amendment protection. So the people writing the newspaper, half of them are former military, half of them are not. So it's a real great eclectic mix. There is no bias. They tell the story. And there's a great woman in my um, film called, uh, her name's Laura Rausch. She was in, basically in combat for 17 years. She met this triple amputee named Kyle Hockenberry. She met him on a medevac. Because of that, she got married and met the pilot's husband, met the pilot's uncle. And now her and Kyle got together in the film. We reunite them for the first time. He lost both of his legs. He lost his arm. He had a tattoo on his arm that said, for those I serve, I will sacrifice. That tattoo went viral. So she's this great storyteller. So this is also kind of a Me Too thing. I mean, this is about women that are in combat that are doing, I mean, there's a lot of women in combat. It's mind boggling. I mean, yeah. telling the story. So mm -hmm. it's a, uh, I have no bias. The paper doesn't seem to have any bias. You know, like as an outside filmmaker, I didn't see any. And the people, there's no paper like this in the world. I mean, mm -hmm. people really, they love Stars and Stripes. Their, their mission is to get the right news to the, to the troops downrange, and that's it. Well, thank you for sharing that story with us. We're really excited to see the film. You've got a collection of mm -hmm. films. We do. This is called, this is the world's first military six pack. This has, uh, and I've been able to work with Josh Brolin. Kelsey, Kelsey Grammer is my partner. We have a we have a project called Left Behind that we're out pitching 
trying to bring home more Marines. Uh, there's over 88,000 missing from World War II. 88,000. Wow. Our company, Vanilla Fire Productions, is responsible for over 60 sets of remains coming home. We've had 21 funerals. This is the power of film. That's why I love this town. It would have never occurred to me a decade ago, the day that, or 20 years ago, when I met Eddie Albert, that because I made a movie, it pissed off the right Marine. That Marine got congressional legislation. <laughs> Seriously, there's nothing better than a pissed off Marine. <laughs> he got congressional legislation passed through Congress, Congressman Lipinski out of Chicago. The next thing I know, I get a call from the DOD, Defense Department, say, Mr. Barber, we got a million bucks. We're going to go out and look for some Marines. Would you like to jump on a wow. C-17 and go with us? I was like, huh. well, uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, you know, I'm not doing anything today. Yeah. So, I mean, it was just... But the power of film, the power of storytelling, and we live yeah. in the storytelling capital of the world. So I'm just, I couldn't be happier. Right. You know, it's just amazing. We, we just want to give a big shout out to all the families, all the people that have mm -hmm. had their lives taken and knowing that for whatever reason that this is our, it's all of our journey. I mean, it really is. It's a, it's a global thing. And that any war going on, anything that is really our wake up call to hopefully set boundaries and to set you know, policy and that it helps everyone. And obviously we, that's really a, a touchy subject and I'm not a politician by any means, but I just know that there's a divine, you know, there's a dine, divine awakening going on right now for sure. Mm -hmm. And there's been a juxtaposition, you know, the Vietnam War was extremely controversial and, and soldiers got spit on when they get, they came home and they, they didn't even know what was going on. They had no idea. They were just serving their country. They had no idea about the angst going on back here. I just came back from New York and like 10 service guys got on the United Aircraft everybody applauded. Mm. So there's this complete 180 where, you know, it's real pro-military now. And I mean, it was really dramatic. I was like, well, you know, these Vietnam vets didn't get that, but our, our veterans now and our servant, our current service personnel seem to be really highly respected by people like us. Right. Well, you know? thank you, because you stepping up into your light and your purpose have created a culture that we can tell these stories Absolutely. and celebrate these heroes. So thank you. We appreciate you being And I'm not a today. hero. I serve those who serve. Mm -hmm. That's it. The that, I tell the stories of the heroes. That makes you a hero in my book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in. Right. Stay I'm tuned. In. We'll be back with more on Good Morning Wild. <laughs>